Our eyes are extraordinary. They're our body's most highly developed sensory organs with over two million moving parts. They connect us to our surroundings, they witness the beauty around us and they help keep us safe. So when the orbital floor or medial wall is damaged, it can hugely affect our quality of life. Our goal is to correct conditions such as double vision. This means restoring the pre-injury shape of the orbit to correct the globe position and to prevent herniation of the orbital structures into the maxillary sinuses. In the segmentation software, segment the orbital region fully. It is vital not to miss any bone in the defect area as this may cause the implant not to fit during surgery. Duplicate the anatomy mask. First, we will use the edit mask tool. Manually draw in the orbital floor and medial wall on the opposite side to the defect. This will be used as the basis for mirroring. Follow the edge of the thin bony structures of the orbit next to the sinuses, where the bone is not immediately obvious. Export the drawn in mask as an STL file. Import all STL files into Freeform as butt models with 0.2mm edge sharpness. At various points in the design process, we will be duplicating the model to provide a reference guide at each stage. This is useful to roll the design back should changes need to be made. File management is important in your object list, so keep things organised in folders and rename models appropriately. Add a Frankfurt plane going through the lower orbital rims and add a mid-sagittal reference plane. Duplicate the anatomy so you have an unedited version. Mirror the original drawn in orbits. Highlight the undamaged side of the anatomy up to the mid-sagittal plane. Copy and paste as a new piece. Use the mid-sagittal plane as a mirror plane by clicking on match. You may need to flip the mirroring. Click apply. Highlight the entire piece. Remove from buck. Box select the original unaffected side and delete it. Right click and reposition the mirrored clay until the best visual match is achieved. Use rotational constraints and planar constraints to help. Check visual alignment accuracy by measuring distances from reference planes to key anatomical points using the ruler tool. Tweak the position accordingly. Duplicate this clay. Duplicate the original drawn in anatomy, making sure it is a buck model. Right click, boolean, combine into the repositioned mirrored clay piece. This allows the reconstruction to be edited without affecting the original anatomy. Use the box select tool to delete large unwanted clay sections. Then use the tools in the sculpt clay palette to perform detailed contour blending. Use the shift key to make slower, smaller changes. Use the add clay tool to fill any outstanding or resulting holes. Use the smooth tool to blend edges into the surrounding original anatomy, ensuring not to cover the inferior and superior fissures. Duplicate the piece. On the reconstructed piece, turn on the see-through function to help draw the plate extents. Turn the original defect anatomy to visible. Use smooth, rounded features with no sharp corners. This is for ease of manufacture and user safety. Use the fit to clay on create option. Manipulate the edge contours to contact the residual orbital bone where possible. This will help stabilise the otherwise mostly floating implant. Keep clear of the most medial aspects of the orbital rim to avoid difficult fixation access and the lacrimal duct. Do not extend the posterior aspect of the implant more than 35mm from the apex of the infraorbital rim. Remain well outside of the danger zone towards the optic nerve. 
include a fixation tab area for the screw locations on the orbital rim. Consider a two-part implant solution for large defects. This can accommodate often small incisions. Turn the see-through function off. Ensure the curve is fitted to the clay. It should be an enclosed curve. The surgeon will specify screws to be used for fixation. Add screw holes to the required diameter to the tabs by importing the CAD screw models as meshes. Locate them appropriately. Ensure they are 2mm from the edges of the implant and from each other. Extend the tab curve if necessary. Use prominent landmark anatomy points that will help the implant to locate during surgery and to prevent the implant sliding along the orbital rim. Duplicate the anatomy and the curve and change the clay coarseness to 0.1mm. Emboss with curve to 0.4mm to create the main implant body. Check with additive manufacturer's guidelines about minimum wall thickness of orbital implants. It tends to be about 0.4mm. This is to add minimal thickness to anatomy whilst being suited to and strong enough for additive manufacturing. Convert the model to clay. Readjust the screws so the countersunk section is just above the implant surface and 2mm from the edges. Use the hot wax tool to create small bumps on the implant where the screws will be located. This will provide countersunk holes for the screw fixation points. This is to reduce the palpability through the skin in the region of interest. Remove the original buck anatomy from the clay. Refine the clay coarseness by 0.01mm. Remove unattached shells using select lump of clay, invert selection and then delete. Duplicate the model. Add perforations into the implant. These can be slots or holes. These make it lighter and allow for fluid movement between sides and to prevent a hematoma. Check additive manufacturing guidelines, but as a guide, the minimum hole diameter is 1mm. Ensure spacing between holes is greater than 2mm, and any holes are greater than 2mm from the edge of the plate. To create slots, draw the slots on your plane. Make sure these are closed loops, which are coloured blue when closed. In the Select and Move Clay palette, use the Select Clay by Profile, Select your closed curves, drag the extrusion plane through the implant design, then click apply. Click delete to remove the selected clay. Refine the clay coarseness by 0.01 millimeters. Duplicate the implant design. Right click, clay utilities, copy to mesh. Use a Boolean subtraction operation, removing the screws from the implant design. Export as STL. Import the STL back into the segmentation software scan. Quality control check the design. A polished surface in contact with the eyeball is typically desired, whereas the bone contacting side can be left rougher. Confirm your finishing requirements to the manufacturer. They may need to add a thickness to the design to account for the polishing process removing material. From thresholding correctly to using the uninjured orbital floor as a template, we can create a patient-specific single-use on-lay implant to help restore the positioning and function of the eye.